Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another one of Emma's vlogs. Uh, Emma had a pretty good week for PRs, even though these are all banded specialty bar lifts. People say, oh, those PRs don't count, except that she's been hitting big raw PRs too. And what people need to remember when it comes to conjugate type training, those PRs are what we use to assess if we're ready to PR on the big lifts. And that's something a lot of you forget. You know, when people go, well, Jason, how do you know when you're ready to hit a deadlift PR? Well, you look at your, your other lifts and see where they are. Are you PRing on the lifts that seem to correspond to your normal uh, classic lifts or not? And in that case, that was a 10 pound PR for her on that bar with 30 pounds of bands. We're real happy with that. We're real happy with that. Now, it was, I believe, 105 or it might have been 100. I think it was 115, actually. Uh, she's real close to a bench PR, right? We've already hit a 135, all right? She's hit a 135, and you can't you can't hate on that. A drug-free woman benching 135 and deadlifting 300, we're doing good, all right? We're doing good. Uh, her supplemental lifts after were dumbbell presses, neutral grip pull-ups, dumbbell incline. Uh, one arm dumbbell rows and then some tricep extensions. Now we're going through a transition here. Everyone's like, what happened to the awesome home gym? Well, they're still setting it up. Uh, her, her and Louie just bought a new home. And remember, I coach both of them. Uh, these, these are OG clients. Uh, again, I've known them well over two years at this point. So they just moved, obviously. They're having to reset up the home gym. That's why some of her footage is at a, a local uh, commercial gym. It has some good stuff though, it has a reverse hyper, some specialty bars. So we'll get back too soon. As soon as they get everything fully set up at home, we'll get back to the, the great home gym footage. So that she's just making it work while they're in the transition. She's got to keep training, you know, just because you move doesn't mean you quit lifting. And uh, so again, this is where her supplemental work is. We are about to rotate it all again. Uh, you guys will notice for Emma about every three weeks, we start changing up her supplemental work. Because at the end of the day, why do we do supplemental work? Hypertrophy. So what are we trying to build here? All her upper body muscles, pecs, delts, triceps, lats, upper back, right? That's what we care about. We got a PR also on the box squat. This was, I believe, a, a 10 pound PR with this bar and these bands. We're, we're again, we're getting close to a milestone squat. Her squat's kind of her weak link right now out of her big three, but we're working on it. And you guys will notice on some of the footage, notice that her thighs are thickening up, right? We are seeing it happen. This is because we've got to add muscle to them, right? She needs a ductor and quad to get that squat up where we want it. And so we're working on these things. I'm still waiting on Louie to tell me, hey, I, I, I ordered that, that belt squat machine. But in the meantime, we do a lot of single uh, leg exercises for her now, which is, again, split squats. But we have the beauty of rotating those. So people say, well, if you're doing split squats, how do you get variations? Well, we can rotate bars. We can go to dumbbells. I actually like, for a lot of my lifters, I like to run phases with the dumbbells. Uh, especially some of my kids who need, who need grip training, having them do dumbbell lunges or split squats with the dumbbells is real good if they need the extra grip work, right? Because think about that from a grip training perspective. Like let's say you're doing 10 reps on each leg. You're having to hold those dumbbells for 20 reps. And I've had her do some of that too. Uh, but grip is not a super big issue for Emma, so we don't worry about it. So we do mostly, we just use the safety bar, right? We use a safety bar. And occasionally I rotate some dumbbells in for her single leg work, which we're going to have to do more single leg work. This is this is now what we have to do to get her squat up. Or I've just got to make her do more volume squatting. Uh, and again, that can be hard from recovery. I have lifters who are doing more of it these days, but it's more of my 5-3-1 type clients, right? Not really my conjugate people, but conjugate is more equipment limited. I don't prefer to put people on a lot of conjugate who don't have access to a lot of equipment unless they are very advanced already. Um, I just find my intermediates who don't have a lot of specialty stuff, I'm not always as happy with their progress 
all kinds you get when they only have one barbell, no bands. It, it again, doesn't always work as well. If they're advanced already with a big base on the classic lifts, it works better. But in her case, Emma is a conjugate client. They have lots of equipment. Uh, Louie and her have run conjugate for over two years now. And again, it shows they're both strong. They're both pretty strong. And for those who are curious, what do we mean by strong? Like Louie has benched 350, deadlifted 500. I believe his squat, best squat's around 420, 430 right now. I would need to go back and check. And then you guys see her lifts. So again, a lot of a lot of almost what people would think of as bodybuilder type work. And I think people forget that. I occasionally get people who come through and say, oh, Jason, you're afraid of high reps. And it's, it's hilarious because they clearly don't watch my vlogs. They clearly don't watch my client vlogs <laughs> because what does her work look like here? A bunch of 10 rep sets for upper body on two different angles of dumbbell presses. Neutral grip pull-ups, one-arm dumbbell rows, tricep extensions. All for 10s. Lower body, we do good morning, single leg exercises, reverse hypers. All this stuff for high reps. Okay. The only thing that's not volume for hypertrophy is the max work and the speed work. That's it. Everything else is geared towards getting thick. And I always laugh because I say that and a few people chime in. Well, she still looks really feminine. Why is she not thick? I always had one of my younger clients ask me that. He goes, how have you kept her looking feminine while lifting heavy? And I'm like, do you not understand? It's not training that does that. There is no amount of weightlifting that a woman can do to look masculine. Okay. It is all drugs that cause that. That's it. And and when I say that, people need to understand that doesn't automatically happen either. That's like saying, hey, if you do a little bit of gear, you're going to look like an IFBB pro. No, you have to abuse to get that look. And uh, abuse people say, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means use very, 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 very large amounts for a long period of time not casual use like women who just use casually and conservatively still don't get that look there's a lot of them out there they usually just look fit right they just look fit women who actually start looking masculine are usually abusing very high doses just like the guys who are really really jacked they're abusing high doses. They're not casual users. Half the half the men that you guys out there, start going on a side note here. Half the men who you guys say, hey, I'm not sure if this guy is natty or not, and, you're, and you look at them. Anyone with a trained eye is like, um, they're not even a casual user. By the time they get to that point where you guys are wondering if they're natty, because again, there's so much fake natty and people don't understand where the limits are. Usually if they're at that point, they're abusing large amounts before you start asking that question. Just just for the unaware, the uneducated. All right. Uh, minor note here. We're seeing a little bit too much back flexion on these good mornings. She's getting too heavy, right? And I told her that. I'm like, look, we need to back this back down. Uh, I don't want to see that back flexion on these. I want to see that back in extension. And she remembers the line I gave her. We want to get the most out of the good morning. Don't let the good morning get the most out of you. And we're getting to that edge here. So I, I need her to back the weight down a little bit. She's been pushing good mornings really hard. Uh, but now we're seeing to where form is degrading because we're getting so heavy. And it's time to back them off. And, and quite frankly, I'm not worried about her back development. Emma's back development is ahead of the curve. We can back off on these and focus on quality reps, reduce the weight, and push the other stuff. We, I really need, at this point for her, adductors, quads, to some extent glutes. Her hamstrings and low back are in a very, very good place in terms of strength. I'm very happy with them at the moment. Uh, they're strong enough to keep her hitting PRs, so we've got to focus on those other things now. Because again, at the end of the day, what matters? bringing up your weakest points. We always want every muscle to grow, and I always want to make that clear. If we want to get stronger, you do need to grow every muscle in your body. But if you want to get stronger faster, you need to focus a little more on the weak links, right? And it gives us the most bang for our buck. 
Uh, and then we missed the reverse hypers. They haven't put it together at home yet. So there won't be any footage of that at the end. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.